Hey, buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Gilbin is the name and Hearthstone is the game. And these are the five most underrated cards in the Boomsday Project. And these aren't just cards that I personally underrated, but in fact, the Hearthstone community at large were surprised by. And to determine that, I went to the Vicious Syndicate pre-release poll where they asked a ton of people to rank every card reveal in the set from one to five stars. I ranked those from best to worst, and then I compared that to HS Replay's rankings for the most played to the least played cards. So for instance, if a card was ranked as the 100th best card of the set, but it's actually seeing the most play, the first most played card in the set, that would be hugely underrated. And I determined that difference, how underrated or overrated each and every card in the entire Boomsday Project was, and then ranked those by the ones with the largest difference, so the ones that were the most surprising, they had the biggest difference, or being played far more than anyone ever could have anticipated, and I took the top five and put them in this list. Now, if you're curious about that data set, it is actually linked in the description below, so you can go play with it and check it out yourself. It's nothing particularly complex, pretty simple analysis, but it does give us a good idea of what people really got wrong and what exceeded our expectations by a mile. And these are those five cards, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So up first here at the number five spot, we have Rogue's Blight Nozzle Crawler. And this one was ranked 108th by the Hearthstone community, so really far down. That's like one of the bottom 27 cards. That's bad. And it's actually being played the 43rd most of any card in the Boomsday Project. So admittedly not a super popular or meta dominant card, but still one that's seeing play in Death Rattle Rogue. It's part of a competitive Hearthstone deck, one that was even in fact played really successfully early in the expansion. And I think it's a card that has the potential to be good in the future too. And I think the problem for Blight Nozzle Crawler, the reason people got this one wrong, and by the way, I gave it three stars, so I actually think I nailed it. I think this is a three-star card, seeing a little bit of play in a fringe deck. That's exactly what three stars means to me. Um, I got a little lucky there. But the reason I think people got this one wrong and I got it right is people got caught up on the difficulty of using that 1-1 one, one ooze with Rush that you'd often pass initiative to your opponent. They'd be able to deal with the ooze without you actually getting to utilize the Rush and take like a value trade with the Poisonous. People said, oh, that's going to be impossible. It's always going to die on your opponent's turn. It's just never going to work. And I think what they missed is that this is just a big pile of board stuff. It's annoying. It's a friction-based card. Creates lots of problems and annoyances for your opponent. Also, I don't think people considered enough synergy with Necrium Vile or Necrium Blade, and perhaps those were you know, revealed later, but the pre-release poll happened at the end of the expansion, so people shil still should have been able to consider that synergy. But all that said, it works in Death Rattle Rogue decks. I think it's still just a good enough, almost piloted Shredder-esque kind of minion in a way, slightly more defensively minded, of course, but still just that friction those problems that this sort of sticky minion creates can do a lot in hearthstone and can swing far above their weight thanks to that poisonous aspect as well so i don't think this guy will go away i think there will be future decks that utilize the blight nozzle crawler as well so better than people's expectations but this is one of the few in this list that i actually got right so moving on to the number four spot here, we actually have Necrium Vile, a card I just mentioned, another Death Rattle Rogue staple. And I guess really in a way, this list is going to capture a lot that Death Rattle Rogue is a deck that surprised people because there are a handful of Death Rattle cards or Death Rattle Synergy cards that were underlooked by the pre-release poll but in fact are still seeing some play in Hearthstone even today. And I did use this list on the latest dates to sort the most played cards. So Death Rattle Rogue, although not prominent, still a fairly popular deck in Hearthstone. And Necrium Vile, in fact, was ranked as the 99th best card. So barely cracking the top 100, but is actually the 33rd most played. So uh, pretty far up there as far as played rate is concerned, even more than the Blight Nozzle Crawler, because the Blight Nozzle Crawler, I don't think, shows up in every version of Death Rattle Rogue. Necrium Vile, on the other hand, does. And I only gave this card two stars, and it's certainly more like a three-star card, so I underrated this one as well. The reason for that is I thought it was going to be too slow. I'm sure the rest of the Hearthstone community thought the exact same thing. Five mana for two play deads sounds really, really expensive, but Rogue has two advantages there. One is Preparation, which means you can actually cast this for two mana some of the time, and that is a huge tempo swing because you get a lot of big stats or cool effects uh, with only a couple cards, and it happens all at once, whereas Playdead takes 
you know, the same amount of resources essentially as a prep and a Necron Vial because it's two cards. So it's actually almost in some ways as good as Double Play Dead. And in fact, just the fact that all of that's bundled into one card, even if you spend five mana on it, sometimes can be a really big deal as well, especially in combination with something like Mechanical Whelp. Two seven sevens for five mana is really good when you're going for board, and that can create lots of pressure and just raw damage output eventually that your opponent simply can't deal with. Even with something like a Devil's Egg, this card makes a lot of sense too. A couple five fives for five mana is a solid play that early in the game. So it turns out, even though it looks less efficient than a comparable card, when you bundle that much raw strength and raw output into one card draw that can be cost reduced, that's a pretty powerful play, and that's part of the reason Death Rattle Rogue is a viable deck, and this card is seeing far more uh, play than we ever expected. So now let's talk about the number three spot here with Warlock's Soul Infusion. This card was ranked 72nd, so it didn't even crack the top half of all cards. People did not think this was going to be good, for the record, right? They thought it would be an average card at best, or even below average. And in fact, Soul Infusion is the third most played card in the Boomsday Project, and I think the best card on this list, because it is a staple in Zoo Warlock, and Zoo Warlock, of course, one of the very best decks in Hearthstone right now, so Soul Infusion is just absolutely everywhere. And that's because it has a great interaction with two cards, essentially, or arguably three, but namely Doubling Imp and Serenite Chain Gang are busted with Soul Infusion, but also even Doom Guard is a pretty crazy play with Soul Infusion. And then as you realize, you know, almost any minion's okay. If you're just looking to get extra stats onto the board in combination with Prince Keliseth buffs, suddenly your minions become so gigantic that your opponent just can't deal with him. So Soul Infusion, way better than I expected. I thought two things. I didn't think there was enough raw output from this, plus two, plus two. Didn't seem strong enough to me when Warlock has so many other great things they can do for one mana or just play additional minions. Uh, didn't consider all the great interactions possible with Doubling Imp or Chain Gang. Beyond that, uh, I thought the positional aspect of this card would be a pretty big downside. I thought sometimes you'd want to cast it with spare mana and it just wouldn't line up on the minion you wanted, so you'd get it stuck in hand and you'd make it awkward. Turns out, first off, not that hard to line it up on the cards you want because Warlock's mana flexibility is just so fantastic. They can line things up pretty nicely most of the time. Beyond that, again, casting at any time on any minion isn't even that bad. So at its worst, it's still solid, and at its best, it's absolutely game-winning. So that's why Soul Infusion has become such a dominant part of Warlock, such an important part of their strategy, and one of the very best cards in the Boomsday Project when most people, including myself, thought it really wouldn't see all that much play at all. So moving on to the number two spot here, the second most underrated card in the set, we have the Mechanical Whelp. And this guy was ranked 92nd, but is actually seeing the 16th most play. So from 92 to 16, that's a really big move. And it's one of the more popular cards in the Boomsday Project. And it's most notably seeing play in Death Rattle Hunter and the Death Rattle Rogue style that we mentioned previously. And I only gave this card two stars, so I also underrated it. I thought the 2-2 body... Uh, wouldn't be impactful enough the turn you played it, and I thought it would be too late in the game to pull off cool Death Rattle stuff. Turns out that's wrong. It's still very impactful as a six mana card in both of its decks. It also has some unexpected synergies, uh, things like mech stacking with uh, Death Rattle Hunter, like Spider Bomb on this thing. It's pretty crazy trading up. Uh, it's also good in Warrior with the a Rush from Dr. Boom. That makes it crazy. Even things like Houndmaster Shaw with Rush make Mechanical Welt much better. On top, of course, like Terra Scale Stalker and Play Dead and Necrium Vile, Necrium Blade, all these other Death Rattle activators. There's just more surprising activations than I thought. Even things like uh, Mossy Horror are really good with this card, much like other egg style plays. Mossy Horror, great already because of Giggling Inventor's popularity. That's sort of a bonus for Mechanical Whelp. So a handful of decks are finding ways to play this thing successfully, which I just did not think would work. I recognize those synergies existed, but I still thought it would be too slow. Turns out that 7-7 is impactful enough. It is big enough, and the fact that it's a mech sometimes has relevance as well. So uh, a card that pretty much everybody missed. I'm sure some people out there got it right, but most of us missed. Most of us got this one wrong. We thought it would fall to the wayside pretty quickly, but instead it's become a bit of a staple card in the Boomsday Project. 
And then finally, one last card here, the most underrated card in the Boomsday Project, and I think maybe the most underrated card I've done in any of these videos so far. This guy was ranked 112th. That is abysmal. That's like the bottom of the barrel by far. That's like, that's down there with like the trash arena cards that just have basic stats. N almost no one believed in this card. But as far as played rate is concerned, it's actually the 14th most played card in the set. And that is because of the very quick and, and recent rise of Odd Warrior in the meta. Odd Warrior right now, one of the best decks in the game. And Super Collider is serving as a great removal tool for that deck. It turns out there are actually a lot of ways to line this thing up in impactful ways. It doesn't just have to be big minions, small to medium-sized minions. You can still do some work with Super Collider because you get three really important game, you know, changing sort of attacks. You can line up so many different things in positive ways. So uh, a staple card in one of the game's best decks right now, that's awesome for a card that nobody thought would see play. And I just thought it would be too awkward to use, and I think that was pretty much what everybody thought. The one attack itself seemed like a downside. In some cases, it's actually an upside. You don't want to kill the minion you're attacking. If it had too much attack, that would almost be a problem a lot of the time. And it turns out it just lines up better than you'd expect. There are a lot of boards and situations in Hearthstone where this card just looks good. And it also, knowing that it's equipped, makes your opponent have to make some, you know, less than ideal plays. They may not be able to stick minions together that creates friction. Uh, it, it drives them to make inefficient sorts of plays. So there's even some unseen upside with something like Super Collider, where you're not even really sure how big of an impact it's making. But obviously, the fact that it's in one of the best decks in the game right now, and if you if you even look at the stats for this, like Mulligan and played win rate, Super Collider is really strong. It's good in that deck. Now I don't know if Odd Warrior is going to stick around forever. It just started showing up pretty recently, at least in the popularity sense. So this card is climbing really, really quickly. Uh, but for now, it looks like a you know safe, good card to have around and uh, certainly one that surprised everybody. So if you're enjoying Odd Warrior, I can't see why you wouldn't put this thing in your deck. And uh, I'm stunned because I gave it two stars too. Frankly, I thought it might be a one-star card. It's giving it a little bit of a chance at two stars. But here we are, Super Collider, the most underrated, the most surprising, the most unexpected card of the entire Boomsday Project. And there you go. Those are the five most underrated cards in the Boomsday Project. Now, keep in mind, guys, when I make a list like this, I'm not saying all these cards are absolutely amazing. Some of these, you know, are still, you know, slightly above average cards. I don't think Blight Nozzle Crawler's, you know, blowing anybody's mind with its power level. But these are the cards that had that biggest difference, the ones who gained the most, the ones who surprised us to the greatest degree. So you might argue with this list, but I didn't really pick the cards. I let the data do that. So that's just how it unfolded. I don't know that I would rank these as my five personally most underrated cards. There are probably a few others that could have made this list, but this is what it lined up as. This is the difference between reality and expectations of the Hearthstone community. So these are the ones we talked about. And they may not always be good. They might fall out of favor eventually. I'm not making value judgments necessarily, just talking about why they caught us off guard. That said, if you had other cards that surprised you personally, if you'd looked at the data in the description below and something caught your eye, I'd love to hear about it. I want to see what insights you have. And of course, we'll also be doing an overrated list very soon, so stay tuned for that. You can also see a preview of that in the data uh, below. But until then, guys, thank you so very much for watching, and until next time, game on.